Hey everybody, uh, my name is Christy and I'm just going to get right into it. I'm in my truck. <laughs> so these are the rapture dreams I've been having. My first one was July 2019. I dreamed that I was attending, as a spectator, I was attending the Olympics. And there was like hundreds of people walking along a building and they were walking on a narrow path. And it was people of every nation, every language. Uh, suddenly, this humongous farm machine just comes and plows them over, just brrr, and they vaporized instantly into the air, just blood poof, vaporized up into the air. And I looked up the name of that machine later, and I saw that it was, it's called a harvester. So that was my first dream of the rapture about a year ago. So my, uh, I didn't dream much after that, or I just don't remember it, but May 25th, so after the lockdown started back in March, uh, I stopped going on the internet pretty much. I stopped, I didn't go on Facebook or anything. I, uh, I started spending a lot of time in the Bible. And so May 25th, I had this dream. I'm going to read it to you. I wrote it down. <laughs> There's just so many details. I don't want to forget anything. All right, May 25th, 2020. I dreamed I was at work, calmly sitting at my desk. On my computer was a zebra box, which did not exist in real life until about a week later. When someone gifted it to me. And I remember saying zebra box out loud because at the time I dreamed it, it didn't exist. So that's like God gives little deposits sometimes, little things um, that show the future, that show that these dreams are definitely from him because evil forces don't know the future. They might have an idea or whatever, but God knows the future. So anyway... In my dream, back to my dream, the Holy Spirit in my head told me that a friend named Adam uh, was on the way. Here's the significance of that. Well, there's always two parts. So one, the, the first Adam that I've known in my life is my cousin. So this would be the second Adam. And Jesus is referred to as the second Adam. So that's the significance of it. And also, maybe it was intended as a message for this Adam guy in real life. So, of course, I gave it to him. I told him the dream. Anyway, the Holy Spirit told me in my head that Adam was on the way. And at the same time, the Holy Spirit was secretly in his head telling Adam to get to my exact location. Like the Holy Spirit told him the address and how to get there and to get there quickly. So I'm sitting at my desk and I'm watching for him and then he's here. And I saw him walk up to the building with another person. I don't know who it was, someone shorter than him. It was a hot and beautiful sunny day, just like today. The sun was shining, the sky was blue. It was a beautiful day. Um, and while I was waiting for him at my desk, I grabbed my hair and I looked at the length of it. And later when I asked the Holy Spirit for the interpretation of the dream, he said it was a representation of time. My hair was the same length it is right now. Uh, so that means the time is now. Jesus is coming so soon. All right. So I saw him walk up to the building. And I grabbed my keys. And when I saw him, I yelled, it's time. And the Holy Spirit was like, it's time. And I excitedly jumped up from my desk. I grabbed my keys. And then I even, for like a, a second, I hesitated. And I opened the desk drawer. And I'm like, should I grab my phone? 
Should I bring it with, even though it's going to be worthless in a minute because we're about to be raptured? Uh, and I figured I'll just grab it anyway. Maybe I can go live and people can watch me disappear. <laughs> um, so I just grabbed it and I ran. And the Holy Spirit told me to get to the top floor of the building. So we went up to the top floor. And I knew I couldn't hesitate because this was going to go down really quick. We hurried up to the top floor of the building and there was already a few people there standing in a circle praying. It was up to 10 people and they were all wearing black and everyone was so happy and calm and relaxed and everyone was praying and it was like the Holy Spirit told them where to go at the same time. So it was this weird happiness I've never known before. It was so calm. It was different. It was from another world, you know? Their faces were purposely blurred by God in the dream. But Adam's face was as clear as real life. And you know, during this dream, I thought it was real life. I didn't know I was dreaming. I thought this was really happening. So we all stood in the, and we prayed together. We prayed that we're ready. We prayed a lot of things. And in our heads at the same time, the Holy Spirit spoke to us and said, Jesus is going to be there in two minutes. Keep praying. And everyone was so happy. And then I woke up, so I didn't actually get to see the moment of the rapture, but I got to see the last, my last two minutes on earth. <sighs> June 3rd, it's not a rapture dream, but it was a message from God, I think, I believe. I dreamed I was in a thrift store, and I asked the Holy Spirit for an interpretation, and he explained, um, this represents us on earth. I was the only person in the store, and the owner, God, uh, told me to pick out a gift for a friend who was on the way to the thrift store. And I couldn't see the owner, but I could hear his instructions. It's just like how we can't see God, but we can see the evidence of him, and we can hear his instructions, um, either through his word or um, sometimes we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not sure why I picked this item because the shirt was clearly too small for my friend. But I had picked out some tiny little black t-shirt with Elvis on it. <laughs> and it morphed into Michael Jackson. So it was, either way, it was an image of an earthly king in a very powerful stance. Um, and the print was very faded. So I put it on the shelf like in a, a special spot where I'm like, okay, I'll remember when he gets here, I'll, I'll grab it for him. So I put it back on the shelf for my friend to give it to him when he arrived. And when he came into the store, I was going to give it to him, but it was nowhere to be found. It disappeared. Uh, God took it away. So it was no longer an option. I don't know what these things mean. <laughs> uh, God wanted me to give him this big rainbow umbrella instead. And I was so excited to give it to him. I couldn't wait. And as I held it, I heard something say, as in the days of Noah. It's something Jesus said about what the world will look like just before his return. It'll be as in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. And what's interesting about those two stories is God rescued his people before the destruction came. Uh, where was I? I remember running my hand around the, the umbrella to smooth it down and make sure it was snapped down, closed. It was a really big umbrella. It was really cool. Like a big rainbow umbrella. God wanted my friend to have the umbrella because the Holy Spirit said it represented... God's protection, and his promise. It's not yet, but my friend will have God's promise and protection when the time comes. And, you know, sometimes things like that aren't just meant for the person in the dream, but it's also intended for everyone. Uh, God is in charge of everything. And I felt like that promise was for me, too. 
So it was a two-part dream. In the second half of the dream, um, it was about a female friend that I hadn't seen in years. I hadn't talked to her in a long time. Last time I saw her, uh, I think we were both still drinking. I'm nine years sober now. Well, more than nine years. But the last time I saw her, so it's been a really long time since I've seen her in person. haven't really talked to her. But I had this dream about her, and it was like a continuation of the first part from the uh, the thrift store. And the last time I saw her in person, she was in good health, and we never really talked about God. So this was pretty interesting. Here's the dream. So she and I were in someone's apartment. Again, that's representing Earth. And... It belonged to God, and the dream was from God, and it was things that we can't see him, but we can hear his voice and hear his instruction and, and hear things he's trying to tell us. So I watched my friend in the dream. She couldn't see me yet. We're in this apartment. She doesn't see me yet, but I see her. She's walking around, and very carefully, very intelligently, she's doing an assessment or an inspection of this apartment. And I somehow knew this meant she was very carefully deciding whether to follow Jesus. As it's a big decision. She doesn't know yet how this could affect her life, and she's unsure of him and has many questions. So that's what God revealed to me. But I somehow knew that she believed in God, just not Jesus. So this has a double meaning because I contacted her after having this dream. I had to tell her. <laughs> um, and it was double true. She was considering, like, learning about Jesus, and she believed in God. Um, and God, she said God had been pursuing her for a few years. I didn't know that. And also I didn't know, um, I'll get to that in a second. Oh, and also in real life, she was doing assessments of people's homes. So that's the double, <laughs> the double confirmation. Pretty amazing. So the blinds in this apartment were closed, but the sun had not set yet. So there was still some light or still some time. I saw her, but she didn't see me until she came into the bedroom and we stood next to a tall, dark dresser, which I somehow knew had completely empty drawers. And I don't know the significance of that, if anyone wants to tell me. In the dream, she was taller than I remember and super pretty. And her hair was pulled back in a ponytail. So I contacted her immediately after having this dream. And I didn't know this at the time, but in real life, she's dying of a brain tumor. So if you could please pray for her. Uh, she said God had been after her for the last seven years, but she's not sure about Jesus. In the dream, I could tell that she recognized me, but she was like struggling to remember my name, but she totally knew who I was because I'd, I'd known her for many years. We used to work together when we were in our 20s. I'm 40 now. <laughs> um, so I guess that was also... An indication, like God was showing me something was up, and I didn't know it, but she had a brain tumor in real life. So she was having, like, memory issues. So the the way she looked was, like, perfect, like, perfect health, glowing. So the fact she was fully restored before the sun went down, because I, I saw the sun peeking through the blinds. The blinds were closed, but I, I knew the sun was coming down, but it wasn't set yet. Um, this represents, when the sun goes down, represents either death or the rapture. Time running out, you know? So either she'll put her trust in Jesus before she dies on earth, or, or the rapture will happen before she can die. But either way, he showed me she was fully restored, so I believe that um, she will come to see that Jesus is who he says he is. Please pray for her. 
I told her she'll, she will find him, not the way that people tell her, not through what she's heard, but she will have an actual supernatural relationship at some point on earth with him. And when I told her that, the, it was like the Holy Spirit was speaking through me. And her response was, that sounds like a way I would believe. She later told me that at the same time I had this dream, she was praying for a friend. And then a really quick third part of this dream. I saw that U.S. bills had a big mosque printed on the back of them now, but I didn't feel afraid. So maybe that comes later and we don't have to worry about it. June 11th, I had a dream where I kept hearing, you'll be protected over and over. But in real, night, in real life, I'm still not sure. June 14th. This one's pretty crazy. <laughs> in real life, just after midnight, I uh, whenever I have a day off, I like to stay up late. So in real life... Um, it was late at night and I was praying. I prayed that my husband and I would both have an epic dream of the Lord's coming and or any message he wants to give us. Something to give my husband a little more hope. The second I laid down next to him around 1 a.m., he woke up and said he just had a dream. <laughs> so this was real life. This, this is not a dream. He dreamed that he was in our bedroom but with his brother, and they were sitting on their beds watching a little kid outside lighting fireworks, sitting on a bleacher. The kid lit off a canister firework, and it shot out a horrible snake that was almost bigger than the sky. It was red against black, the black sky. It was terrifying, and its face came right up to the window looking in, and then it just disappeared. I told him that it meant the evil we fear is something we should not fear. It's like an illusion. It can be overcome. It looks really big and scary, but it can't actually harm us. We are protected just as God keeps saying. So then I fell asleep, and I immediately had the following dream. I dreamed that I was asleep in bed next to my husband, and I thought this was real. I didn't know I was dreaming. When suddenly evil spirits tried to enter both of us, and we both started convulsing, just sh like shaking like crazy. And I thought I was having a seizure. With all my strength, I tried saying Jesus' name. But the demonic force made me so weak that I was slurring. Like, Jesus. I couldn't say his name, and I was trying so hard. I tried harder and harder, and finally, with all my strength, I, I pushed out these words. I said, Jesus, help us! With so much force that I actually said it out loud, and it woke me up. <laughs> and in that instant, I felt it leave, and simultaneously, I woke up in real life. And it woke up my husband, and he said, did you just yell, help us? I told him my dream. And he said, see, this was something I've been saying we should expect from the enemy. Because we started helping people and listening to God and, and leading people back to him. This was also the night before we were going to see our friend with the tumor. And we had the intention of putting our hands on her and praying for her in the name of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ. In the, in the power of his blood. And by the way, when we prayed for her, she said it felt like something was squeezing the tumors and it felt like fluid was running down. And um, Don't, just don't deny the power of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people think it, it, it's not for our time, but it is. It is for our time. One time I was at a park and I saw this guy sitting on a bench. Something told me I need to go pray for him. He was just sitting on a bench with a bike next to him. And I said, hey, how you doing? Are you okay? And he's like, oh, my knee hurts. I said, well, can I pray for you? And he's like, sure. Yeah, why not? 
and he let me put my hand on his knees or on his knee and pray for him. And he had the biggest smile. And he, he's like, wow, that was amazing. And he's like, yes, I believe Jesus is real. So don't deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't deny the power of, of healing in his name and casting out demons in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the power of his blood. July, I don't remember the date, but July 2020. We were on, I dreamed that we were on top of a mountain and it was dark. Wow, we're already at 20 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> we're on top of the mountain. Some mountain. I don't know. I don't live near mountains. Um, and it was dark. And there were people everywhere just on the peaks of the mountain. Like, the, you know how mountains are like curved, you know, they have peaks. So there's people all over the peaks of these mountains. And I had the impression there was recently some bad event that came through, but we were safe because we were up high on a mountain. We were okay. My husband and I were packing a box with water bottles and other basic essentials. And the feeling wasn't of fear. It was more of, uh, here we go again. Um, gotta do what we gotta do. It was like that kind of feeling. Then somebody on a nearby peak shouted, the second wave is coming. And far in the distance, I saw silvery, like silver black lava coming our way. Like a tsunami or like a tidal wave or like, like just this coming right at us. And it didn't have the reddish glow that lava usually has. It was like dark black with like a tinge of silver, like reflective silver. So, and the dream ended, like, immediately, right then. All right. August 28th, we had been reading about idols, um, how God hates idols, idol worship, um, and things that invite the demonic into your home and... I mean, there's the obvious stuff, like Ouija boards, whatever, tarot cards. We don't have anything like that. We don't have alcohol in our home. We don't have, you know, anything blatantly obvious. But we decided, you know, we're reading about this stuff. Let's do another big purge. Because we had done a purge, like, ten years ago. And this is something I encourage you to do. Because it really, the demonic really does exist. It does attach to items. Um, even gifts that are given with intent, like the best intentions, harmless intentions, you know, like um, little worry dolls and voodoo dolls, whatever. Here, let me just, uh... so we purged many idols. This was August 28th. We purged many idols and things from our home that invited anything remotely demonic. Um, Crystals, sage, dream catchers, Christmas tree. Sad to say some of these things were gifts. I'm very sorry. Um, they were given with good intentions. but We want our home to be a place um, that is, you know, holy. That night, I dreamed about everyone in the world sending postcards to each other. So it was really random, just a blip of <laughs> just everyone on the globe sending postcards. I had no idea what that meant. And then the second half of the dream, something about boulders falling in Italy. Because when I woke, I already couldn't remember the visual of what I saw. But I kept telling myself, boulders, not asteroids. It was boulders falling in Italy. Boulders falling in Italy. Don't forget. And I was so, like, perplexed, like, what does this mean? So when I awoke, um, I looked up, you know, post world postcards. And it turns out the first ever International Postcard Day will be this coming October the 1st. <laughs> I had absolutely no awareness of this. And I believe it was like another deposit from God, like showing me the future, that this dream was definitely from him. 
So that means the second part must be true. So the second part was boulders falling in Italy. I went and I, I searched, you know, boulders falling in Italy. And the only thing I could find was a news story from 2014. Uh, um, okay, so in Italy, it was a very big news story from 2014 about a 300 year old barn at the bottom of a mountain in Italy and it got demolished by a humongous boulder that rolled down a mountain and a second boulder rolled directly towards the house and I believe the house was connected to the barn so the barn got demolished imagine something two or three stories high demolished by a boulder that's just as big it was amazing and now a second boulder had rolled directly towards the house, but miraculously stopped two feet short of this house. And I believe it was God saying he's in charge. So don't be afraid. So that's it for the dreams. I mean, that's not all of them. I've had many more, obviously. Uh, I don't need to tell them all, but those were uh, the ones that I felt like I, I needed to share with you guys and um, I hope you uh, will come to believe that Jesus really is returning soon he's coming to take his believers to heaven I don't think you I, I, all right so I don't care if you think I'm crazy because I believe it's true um, I don't care about views or subscribers I know I play in a band and that's how everybody knows me, but that band is, it's really unlikely that we'll ever play again. You know, it just doesn't look like things are ever going back to normal. We haven't even practiced. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, you know, whatever God chooses for my life. I'm okay with him coming soon. I'd love to get out of here. I'd rather be in heaven, of course. And when I started having these dreams, I wasn't aware that other people were having similar dreams. It was like, <laughs> that was a crazy dream. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go on YouTube and see if anyone else had kind of a similar dream. <laughs> and sure enough, people all over the world are having similar dreams at the same time that Jesus is coming. And there's many prophecies in the Bible coming true right now. Um, I'm already almost at 30 minutes, so I'm not going to go into that. I mean, it'll take you two seconds to find that information if you want to know which prophecies are coming true. The most important thing is that he is coming soon. Um, and the whole world is seeing signs of his imminent return. He's already knocked at the door. And now his hand is on the doorknob. <laughs> and he's turning the doorknob. What's crazy is, you know, all these crazy things happening, people are carrying on as if it's normal. Here's Luke 17, 26 through 30. When the Son of Man returns, it'll be just like it was in Noah's day. In those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. And the flood came and destroyed them all. And the world will be just as it was in the day of, days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building, until the morning that Lot left Sodom. And then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it will be business as usual, right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So that's what Jesus said in the book of Luke. And then Matthew 24, 30 through 31. And then at last... The sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. 
So what is God waiting for? When is it going to happen? Matthew 24, 14. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all the nations will hear it and then the end will come. Romans 11 uh, mentions until the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. Revelation 6, 10 through 11. Um, the fifth seal. So seals 1 through um, 5 have already been broken. These things have been occurring since the resurrection of Christ. So this verse says martyrs, the martyrs were told to rest a little longer until the full number of their brothers and sisters had joined them. And then the sixth seal is broken and the multitude is in heaven waving palm branches. And that is a symbol of arrival and of victory. So that's what we're waiting for. That's when he arrives. And it could be any day now. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. I mean, it could be in a year. I don't know. The point is, he's coming soon. Are you ready? John fourteen six, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you want truth, just ask. And he will show it to you. If you think I'm a crazy person and you're not sure, whatever, <laughs> just ask. And he will reveal it to you. Just say, God, are you real? Show me the truth. I want to know, is Jesus real? He's not going to magically <laughs> make a unicorn appear in front of you or anything like that. It's not like that. But he'll show you the truth. If you truly are interested Just know it's going to change your life forever. You're going to live for him. once, Because once you know the truth, there's no denying it. You can't turn back. Romans 10.9 If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It seems too good to be true, right? So here's my story. I was an atheist. Um, I didn't really, didn't go to church. Uh, I had a grandma that took me to church a few times and it was, you know, I was young and it was just weird. <laughs> it was all old people and I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I didn't get it. And I would walk up to people. If I knew they believed in God, I would literally walk up to people and be like, why do you believe in fairy tales? You are a fool. And I would laugh at them and I would mock them. And I made songs that mocked the believers and um I just didn't believe God was real I believed in spirits I believed maybe there's something but it was religion was just a huge joke to me and I thought it was created to control the masses and then around the time I was 20 years old it was like God himself spoke to me in my heart he kept asking if Jesus is the only way to eternal life, to heaven, to the creator of the universe, and you were to die tonight, would you make it? Would you make it to heaven? And I was young, and I did not want to hear that. <laughs> I was a party animal. I did not want to hear that. So I stuffed it down, and I ignored it. I didn't want to hear that. But it's like he kept asking me over and over, if Jesus is the only way, will you make it? If you die tonight, will you make it? I didn't really believe in heaven or hell, but something kept confronting me and it would not stop. And it, he asked me every day, if you died tonight, will you make it? If you died tonight, and it got to the point where I had to answer this question. So I got a Bible, and uh, none of it made any sense to me, and I actually got really mad, because I didn't get it. It's talking about, you know, talking donkeys, and <laughs> this person beget that person, and I didn't get it. And then something told me to read the book of John, and that talked about Jesus and his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. God raised him from the dead.
Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And that was when I believed. Okay, I don't have a choice. If he is who he says he is, I have to believe. I have a decision to make. And that was a tough decision, you know? I knew it was going to change my life. I knew I couldn't party anymore. I knew I couldn't, you know, do a lot of things. I knew it was going to create problems with my family. I knew it was going to create problems just all around. But I knew, you know what, I, I don't belong to this world. So I made the choice to surrender my my life, my soul, my heart, everything to Jesus. And the next day I went to work and this dude pulls up on a motorcycle. His name was Anthony. I'd never seen him before. And he starts talking to me about being born again and about Jesus. And he was this you know, motorcycle dude with a leather vest and it's got a big cross on the back and it was like God sent him. Maybe he was an angel, I don't know. But that was a confirmation. And God is going to send all kinds of confirmations when you start on the right path. Even when you just begin to question, hey, maybe, maybe there's something to this. You know, if you're curious, just ask him. God, show me. Is Jesus really the Son of God? Was he really risen from the dead? Is he really alive today? I believe Jesus is alive. He is alive and he is who he says he is. And he's coming soon. And I can't wait. And the other day I was on my way to work and I was praying. And I was like, God, it hurts, it aches inside because I, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. Please tell me, you know, how much longer? And right then, <laughs> I was driving to work, so I'm driving down the road. Right then, I look to my left. There's not one, but two brides standing on their lawn, having their pictures taken. And they were beautiful. And their, their grooms were there. And it was just amazing. I was like, okay. When God says something twice, that means it's going to happen. It's going to happen very soon. And my stomach is growling, so <laughs> I got to get going. But uh, before I go, I'm going to say a quick prayer. And um, if you want to go to heaven... And not out of fear, but out of confidence that Jesus is alive. He's alive today. He's active in our lives. And he gives us the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. He shows us the future. He shows us secret things that leads us to protection, leads us to, you know, special knowledge so that God can help us and help others. And if you want to live a supernatural life, if you want to go to heaven, you want to know the truth then it's time to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior um, so I'm gonna pray okay and just pray with me time whoa see it's time <laughs> it's time it is time to accept Jesus as your savior because time is running out. This is it, folks. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> Knocking out of the park. All right. So repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place for my sins. Thank you for his sacrifice. He died on the cross so that I could be considered worthy 
to escape the things that are coming to the earth. I believe that Jesus was died. He died. He was put in the tomb, and then he rose again on the third day, and he's alive today. And I believe that by believing in him, I will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who will lead me into all truth. He will tell me secret things that come directly from you. Thank you for this wonderful gift of eternal life. And Father, yes, I am guilty. I'm guilty of many things. But please have mercy on me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Purify me, make me holy, so that I may stand in your presence, and so that when Jesus returns, he'll call my name and he'll take me home to heaven. And please, please send your son very soon. We thank you so much, Father, for everything you've done, everything you are doing, and everything you will do. Please continue to protect us and provide for us. And if anyone doesn't have a meal, Father, please provide them with a meal today. If anyone is afraid, please give them supernatural peace. Please, Father, give us wisdom and help us know your will. If there's anything in our homes that are offensive to you, Lord, show us what it is so we can get it out of our home and purify our home and our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cast out any demonic spirits or influences from our, from our bodies, from our homes, from our loved ones. We cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we put our faith in Jesus, and we believe that there is nothing that can be added to what he's already done. We are not saved by our good works, but we are saved by what Jesus has already done on the cross, and it is finished, and he can take us home. And please give us all the strength to go and sin no more, to turn from our sins, and to be pure and holy in your sight, Father. And please fill us all more and more with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So if you prayed with me, I hope you'll leave a comment. And be blessed. And uh, I'll see you hopefully in the air. Bye. Love you.